Hi, it's Katrina. From enormous towers made from severed heads to some of the earliest battles using chemical warfare, here are nine shocking archaeological sites. Number 9. Aztec Skull Tower When the Spanish conquered the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan, they were terrified of an enormous tower of skulls, which was actually more humongous than previously thought. The Catholic Spaniards were shocked at the barbarity of the Aztecs and did everything they could to raise the city to the ground in 1521. But underneath the Templo Mayor lies Huey Tzumpantli, the circular tower made from sacrificed human skulls, all stacked and mortared together. Dating back to the late 15th and early 16th centuries, the 16.4-foot diameter tower is dedicated to Huitzilopochtli, the Aztec god of war, sun, and human sacrifice. Like several other Mesoamerican societies, the Aztecs temporarily displayed freshly severed heads on skull racks called Zompantli, then transferred them to the tower, which was built in three phases between 1486 and 1502. First uncovered in 2015, archaeologists found 484 skulls, but over the years the tally has risen to over 600. At first, everyone thought they were the skulls of young men, mostly defeated warriors. But researchers were a bit shocked to discover that it also contained the heads of women and even young children, identified by their young teeth, which raises more questions about sacrifice in the Aztec Empire. Biological anthropologist Rodrigo Bolanos reported that this is very strange, and it is something we have no record of. Team members Lorena Ballin and Raúl Barrera said that the skulls likely belong to warriors and sacrificial victims. Carried out with the purpose of renewing nature, human sacrifices were a sacred daily ritual in Mesoamerica. Barrera says they were all made sacred, turned into gifts for the gods or even personifications of deities themselves. Based on contemporary accounts of the city's capture by Cortés, researchers believe that the Huaytzonpadli is one of seven similar structures that once stood in the area that the conquistadors destroyed, but clearly not well enough because archaeologists were able to find the circular structure underground in the Templo Mayor, giving us a clearer picture of just how enormous this tower was and the degree of sacrifice that went on in the city. Number 8. St. George's Church In the tiny Czech town of Lukova, there is an abandoned 14th century church filled with eerie white figurines nicknamed the Ghosts of St. George's Church. The ghastly sculptures sit at the building's pews, stand in the doorways, and are gathered at the altar. Built around 1352, St. George's Church sits atop a hill amid Lukova's 708 residents. After the roof caved in during a funeral in 1968, the church was abandoned, and its congregation began holding mass outdoors. Believing the building was haunted or cursed, people simply avoided it and left it to decay. The community eventually became interested in renovating the church but couldn't afford to do so. In 2012, local artist Jaco Padrava created the 32 life-size sculptures that currently occupy the building in hopes of attracting visitors. To sculpt the eerie figures, he created plaster casts of models draped in sheets. The statues resemble the German Bohemians who once lived in the region and who were expelled from the Czech Republic after World War II. Thanks to Hadrava's creations, the church has become popular among tourists and is actually receiving the funding it needs to carry out repairs and maintain the building. And while most people are excited to see the inside, some have refused to enter, according to caretaker Peter Kogel, who said the spooked individuals couldn't get past peeking through the doorway. Would you be brave enough to go inside? Do things like this scare you? Let me know in the comments below. Number 7. Ashkelon Sewer Archaeologists on Israel's southern coast were forced to confront a disturbing reality in 1988 when they discovered the bones of nearly 100 infants in a late Roman, early Byzantine sewer beneath an ancient bathhouse in the port city of Ashkelon. In what was the largest infant mass grave ever found at the time, the newborn babies were deposited into the pit shortly after death. None lived to be more than a week old, yet they all appeared to be healthy, lacking any signs of disease or deformities. Seemingly discarded on purpose, the deceased infants shared a final resting place with animal bones, pottery fragments, coins, and garbage. Unlike a collection of infant burial jars from the same period found nearby, there were no grave goods or other evidence of a respectable burial. The horrifying mass grave reflects the Roman custom of abandoning unwanted babies called exposure. 
Because the Romans did not consider newborns to be fully human, they saw nothing wrong with leaving an infant unattended and letting the gods decide their fate. Infanticide was considered a parent's right, according to forensic anthropologist Patricia Smith, who told the news that girls were killed disproportionately because they were often viewed as burdens, while boys were valued as heirs and for their ability to support their family in old age. But strangely enough, the bones at Ashkelon were mostly male. But why? Based on erotic pottery fragments and a sign found at the site that says, Enter and Enjoy, archaeologists believe that the bathhouse the sewer is situated underneath doubled as a brothel in what was Ashkelon's red light district. Prostitution was common in ancient Rome, and the babies were likely the unwanted children of women who worked at the establishment. Female sex workers were in higher demand than males, and if prostitutes decided whether to keep their babies based on the assumption that their children might eventually follow in their path, it could explain why there were more boys in the sewer. Number 6. Headless Viking Burial Pit In 2009, archaeologists discovered a burial pit filled with dozens of decapitated skeletons of young men near the seaside town of Weymouth on the English Channel coast. The massacred headless bodies were buried naked and in a tangled mess, with their heads stacked neatly to the side. Covered in telltale signs of violence, including deep cuts to the skull, jaw, and neck, it's clear that the group was taken captive and executed by a more powerful enemy a thousand years ago, who struck multiple blows to the victims' heads before hacking them off entirely. Other injuries, including sliced fingers, show that the men tried to defend themselves as they were mercilessly slaughtered. Radiocarbon dating put their deaths between 910 to 1030 AD, a time period marked by frequent battle between the English and the Vikings. But researchers were initially unsure who the brutally beheaded men were. An analysis of teeth from 10 of the individuals revealed that they came from different parts of Scandinavia, thus confirming their identity as Vikings, and that most of them died in their teens or early 20s. By examining climate-based isotope ratios, researchers ruled out the possibility that the men came from England and identified Norway and Sweden as possible places of origin. One of the deceased may have even come from north of the Arctic Circle. While the English often lost battles against the Vikings, the gory discovery shows that the intruding raiders were not always victorious. Number 5. Aral Kum Desert Ship Graveyard the Aral Sea was once the world's fourth largest inland sea and was home to a thriving fishing industry. During the 1960s, the Soviet Union diverted the rivers, feeding it to supply water for cotton and rice fields, causing the sea to dry up and leaving behind a poisonous, salty wasteland now called the Aral Kum Desert. Straddling the border of modern-day Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, the Aral Kum Desert is littered with rusting fishing boats that were deserted when the Aral Sea shrunk and its salt content reached toxic levels, killing all of its marine life and leaving the entire fishing village with nothing. Today, the sea is a tenth of its former size, and its fishing industry is a distant memory marked by the eerie, decaying trawlers. The abandoned ships are accompanied by derelict buildings that were formerly part of the once bustling harbor city of Moynak and other busy seaside towns. Along with the shrinking of the sea, the surrounding populations have also drastically reduced, with most leaving for better opportunities. The remaining residents are plagued by health problems from the toxic dust that blows around. There is a growing effort to revive the Aral Sea, which is once again being fed by the rivers that were cut off from it. Its salinity has decreased and fish have returned, but there is no knowing whether the sea will be restored to its former glory and submerge the depressing sight of rotting ships. Number 4. Frozen Sacrificed Children Around 500 years ago, three Inca children aged 15, 7, and 6 were chosen for the gruesome honor of being sacrificed to the gods. We still don't know why certain people were chosen over others or what qualities they had that made them the chosen ones. As part of the ancient ritual known as Capacocha, the oldest spent around a year being prepared for her death. Dubbed the Yuya Yako Maiden, the teenage peasant lived under the guidance of priestesses, increasingly ingesting alcohol and coca, the plant from which cocaine is derived, and enjoying elite foods like maize and meat. When it was time to die, the children received copious amounts of drugs and alcohol, possibly to pacify them and make them more cooperative with their impending fate. They were led to the summit of Volcán Yuyayaco in what is now Argentina, where they died peacefully in the freezing weather. In 1999, a team of researchers ventured high into the Andes and discovered the deceased children, 
who were remarkably preserved thanks to the frigid, high-altitude conditions. Their hair, skin, and clothing were intact, bringing a human element to their deaths that does not usually come with ancient remains. Chewed coca leaves were found in the Yuya Yako maiden's mouth, and the lice in her hair was still visible. There were no signs of violence, an otherwise common feature of Capacocha sites, indicating that the kids were left in a drug-induced stupor or were perhaps even unconscious and quietly slipped away. Textiles, pottery, and gold, silver, and shell statues surrounded the trio. Today, the mummies are on display at the Museum of High Altitude Archaeology in Argentina, where guests can see them firsthand and attempt to wrap their minds around what happened. Number 3. Early Chemical Warfare After capturing Antioch in 256 AD, the Sasanians laid siege to the Roman city of Dura Europos, an important trading center of the ancient world in what is now Syria. The invading Persians dug several tunnels beneath the city's outer wall, while the Romans countered their efforts by excavating tunnels to intercept the enemy. 19 Roman soldiers and one Persian soldier died in the skirmish. Archaeologists were perplexed about the extreme imbalance of casualties when they first excavated the site in the 1930s. Why only one Persian versus 19? While the mystery technically remains unsolved, Fresh insight from a 2010 study suggests that these Romans were among history's first chemical warfare victims. Treating the battle site like a crime scene, archaeologist Simon James re-examined existing records and noticed that the soldiers' dead bodies were stacked at the intersection of the Roman and Sasanian tunnels. It appears as though the Persians used the corpses as a barricade, enabling them to light the enemy section on fire while remaining safely on the other side. Residue samples and sulfur crystals from within the tunnels further indicate that the Sasanians heard the Romans approaching and threw highly flammable sulfur and pitch into the blaze, inundating the opponent with a choking gas that turned to sulfuric acid in their lungs and suffocated them to death. Meanwhile, the off-putting fumes probably caused any Roman soldiers waiting to enter the tunnel to think twice. Once the fire burned out, the Persians retrieved the freshly dead bodies, added them to the growing pile of corpses, and collapsed the Roman tunnel. Because the team that originally excavated the site filled the tunnels back in, it's unlikely that experts will ever prove this theory, but all signs point toward chemical warfare being the catalyst that secured a Sasanian victory. Number 2. Burlington Bunker a 35-acre underground property in England, known as the Burlington Bunker, was kept a complete secret from the public until its declassification in 2004. Unbeknownst to even the local population, it sat 100 feet beneath the churches, homes, and cobblestone streets of the quaint market town of Corsham in Wiltshire. Built in 1955 during the Cold War era and designed to enable government employees to continue working in the event of a nuclear attack, the shelter was bomb-proof, radiation-proof, and poisonous gas-proof. The Burlington Bunker was equipped to accommodate up to 4,000 central government employees at any given time, and for up to three months with no outside contact. It was supplied with water from a nearby underground reservoir and even had a treatment facility to make the water drinkable. Designed for both working and living, the Burlington Bunker contained kitchens, offices, laundry facilities, supply rooms, cafeterias, and a hospital. There was also a television studio that would enable the government to broadcast public messages if the need arose. A pneumatic tube system facilitated correspondence within the complex, which was also home to England's second largest phone exchange for 30 years. Measuring over a mile long, the bunker had over 60 miles of roads and a secret rail line connecting it to the main railway. But the facility was never used, and by the time it finally closed, it was being run by just four Ministry of Defense employees. As it sits frozen in time, its future remains uncertain, with some fighting to preserve it while others believe it should be repurposed. Number 1. Mass Child Sacrifice between 2011 and 2019, archaeologists unearthed the remains of 269 children and three adults from the Chimu culture at the Juan Chaquito Las Llamas site in northeastern Peru. The individuals died over 500 years ago, sometime between 1400 and 1450, in the largest known child sacrifice ever found. Local pizzeria owner Michael Spano alerted archaeologist Gabriel Prieto after human bones began emerging in a vacant lot near his home. How creepy is that? Excavations ensued, and Prieto quickly noticed that the graves were unlike typical Chimu culture burials. 
Instead of being positioned upright, according to custom, they were laid on their backs or curled up on their sides, and many had cut marks on their sternum and ribs. While pottery and other grave goods were conspicuously absent, the children were buried alongside llamas and alpacas, which were extremely valuable to the Chimu people as a food source and for transportation. Like the children, the animals were killed via a cut across the sternum. The Chimu culture is shrouded in mystery, complicating researchers' ability to determine precisely what happened on the horrifying day when the children were massacred. With no written records left behind, archaeologists must rely on physical evidence and observations that the Spanish recorded after arriving in the region. And until the mass grave was discovered, there were no signs that the Chimu sacrificed children. Experts suspect that an altered climate, including higher seas, heavy rains, and severe effects of El Niño, may have ravaged the civilization's economic and political stability, causing the Chimu to sacrifice some of their most valuable assets, namely children and animals, in a desperate plea for relief from the gods. Thanks for watching! If you'd like to learn about more shocking archaeological sites, you know where to go! Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you soon! Bye!